How long does it take to like someone? It may only take a glance. It's that first look that messes with Isaac's mind. He couldn't help but be attracted to this handsome man not far away. He hid his flustered insides and pretended to join in the boys' conversation about girls. On Friday night, Isaac is made to attend this club event for the girls. The event was boring, but surprisingly that handsome guy showed up. He Saturday right behind him. Emma came too. The girl he had kissed not long ago. She was tacked on to kiss by her buddies, but Emma seems to like him. The event began with the organizer asking everyone to stand up. In Paris, cold hands in a circle. Isaac takes the opportunity to sneak out and hide in the bathroom to play a game. When he came out, he was surprised to meet this handsome man again. The handsome man washed his hands and surprisingly pulled out all the paper towels. Isaac is kinda weird when he thinks about the guy, but follows him out anyway. The two talked casually. After the club, Isaac asked him what grade he was in. He replied that he was a senior and had just transferred schools. Emma is also out looking for Isaac to team up with him. Handsome looks at Isaac with some reluctance and says that the two of us already make a team. Isaac rushed along and said we've teamed up. He also learned it that the handsome man's name was Even. Emma doesn't give up yet and says it'll be a group of three of us then. Isaac can even work with each other, saying that the rules only allow for groups of two. Emma had to stop too. Isaac started searching for information about Even on social media. He found a video post by one of Even's friends. There's a lot of Even footage in here. Isaac looked at it and smiled involuntarily. What he also knows is that Evan's favorite director is Bess Lorman. After school, he was again blocked by girls talking about club activities. Isaac scanned for Evan again, not far away. Evan is walking coolly and looking back at Isaac. Isaac looked dumbfounded again. He's watching in fascination when Emma shows up again. Emma invites him to a party at her house on Friday. Isaac is hesitating, but a couple of the other boys say yes for him. When he got home, Isaac turned on Evan's video to watch it again. He also finds out about Bess Lohman's movie, William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. This tragic love story brought Isaac to tears. After reading it, he lay down on his bed. He reflected on how he had felt about even over the past few days. Isaac has questions about his sexuality. He got off a dating app. Soon after signing up, messages kept coming in, but the content was a bit overwhelming to him. Friday night after school, he's going to Emma's party together. This time it was Isaac's turn to prepare the wine, but he was under 18 and was worried about it. When I got on the bus, Evan was surprisingly on it. What a coincidence. The atmosphere was a little awkward. Isaac figures Evan should be 18 and asks if he can't get him a drink. When we get to the store, Evan says he forgot his id and has to go home to get it. He asked Isaac to come home with him. When he got home, he couldn't find his id either. But it doesn't matter anymore. The two chatted about music and drawing and painting. When he gets hungry, Evan makes Isaac something to eat. Isaac forgot all about going to the party a long time ago. Isaac was reminded of this when a couple buddies messaged him to press him on how well the wine was ready. First he messaged his buddy back and lied about Emma's party being cancelled. Then he messaged Emma again and said we have something to do and we're not going. Once that was done, he began to enjoy the dinner even had prepared for him. Then the two played rap. At that moment, the doorbell rang and a couple of girls came in. Even introduces this as his girlfriend Sophia. He actually had a girlfriend, which Isaac didn't expect. Back home, Isaac tests his sexual orientation online. But the results of the test showed that there was only a 20% chance that he was gay. Only, this senior even seems to seem to have some flirtation with him though. But he has a girlfriend. Isaac has mixed feelings about him. He turned his attention to his schoolmate Emma. Although he had cooled Emma's day earlier. But Isaac coaxes Emma back with a few words. I have a of this. Is that? Friday night, there was a party at Isaac's house. He and Emma hit it off. Emma seems a little overzealous. I didn't realize even was here. And he brought his girlfriend. Isaac sees Evan looking at him. He takes a sip of his beer and gives Emma a kiss. He protested in this way. You have a girlfriend. I can't have a girlfriend. While dancing, the two men each followed up the kiss with their girlfriends. But their eyes were dead set on each other. After the party, Evan stayed behind to help him clean up the mess. This surprises Isaac a little. Evan volunteered to tell him that he and his girlfriend Sophia have been together since they were 15. But now the two are drifting apart. But he can't break up with Sophia. Because Sophia is disabled and wears prosthetics, Isaac is a little surprised because it's not at all obvious. He asked how it was done, even said he stepped on a landmine when he was 9 years old and got his left leg blown off. Isaac was shocked, but watched as even continued to describe the details. Isaac became skeptical. He realizes that even might be making up stories to trick him. Sure enough, even made it out. This is really outrageous. Even is awesome. An outrageous story just made Isaac laugh. The sullen Isaac becomes frowny. Still. Isaac soon realizes that after all, he's the one with the girlfriend. He bowed his head and said Sophia was lovely. Even looked at Isaac, his head slowly leaning in, 
closer and closer. Just as he was about to kiss it, there was a movement at the door. Previous Wu made Clary's bed. It's a bad time for her to be here. The next Saturday, Isaac couldn't resist messaging even. He asked him what he was doing and if he wanted to come out and play. But even says back that he's got a date with Sophia. Isaac was a little speechless. How he's always so hot and cold. So distant and so close. Monday at school. Isaac's locker wouldn't open again. Even came by and asked if he wanted to go to the Halloween party with him. He said yes. Even said to meet him for a train before the party then. On his way out, he hammered Isaac's locker open with his hand. Looks like it's still up to Even to help him come out of the closet. On the day of the Halloween party, Even brings his girlfriend to Isaac's house early. Where people dressed up and sitting. Sophia and Emma were chatting up a storm. Isaac and Even sit in silence. Isaac tries to break things up a bit. But soon Even and Sophia get into an argument. Even told Sophia to leave him alone. Sophia got up angrily and went to the bathroom. Emma went too. Even asked Isaac to go out with him. Where to is unknown? Even rode his bike and took Isaac with him. Isaac in the back seat is happy. Even took him to the door of a house and said he would take him swimming. Isaac asked whose house it was. Why did they break the window to get in? Even says this is his sister-in-law's house. His sister-in-law went out on vacation to reassure him. After jumping in through the window, Isaac pushes Even into the pool when he's not looking. The two play a race in the pool to see who holds their breath longer. Isaac says this time it doesn't count. He wants to compete again. Just as the two were kissing, a little girl stood by the pool watching them. Hearing the little girl's voice calling out, the two fled in a hurry. Isaac asks whose house it is anyway. Even said it was his elementary school friend's house. This is so far off the mark. The scene shifts and even hugs Isaac and says, Can I stay here with you forever? Please. Isaac says it's okay. It's only been one sweet night for the two of them. And then even starts disappearing again. It left a caricature and quietly left in the middle of the night. It also says I don't sleep because sleep and death are related. For several days in a row, even didn't show up for school either. By the time Wednesday rolled around, even was here. Isaac asks where he's been the last couple days. Even said he told Sophia about the two of them and the two decided to break up. He asks Isaac what he thinks and Isaac says it's fine. Even asked him if your parents would accept me as your boyfriend. Isaac replied that his dad that shouldn't object. Even followed up by saying what about your mom. When it comes to his mom, Isaac has a bit of a hard time. He said his mom was crazy. Even asks what he means. And Isaac says his mom is not right in the head. But it didn't matter if she took it or not. He hasn't had any contact with his mom since he moved out. Because he decided that his life would be better if he stayed away from the psychopaths. Even was thoughtful. Isaac asks what about your parents? Even said they should like you a lot. Isaac is happy that the relationship is sort of settled. The two are going to start a relationship. Isaac messages Even and asks him if he has a date tomorrow. That's when his roommate Ace comes in and presents him with an air freshener. He said he'd use it if he had another guest in the future. Isaac knew there was no escaping Ace. So, he confesses to him that he's with Even. Ace said it was very good, but Isaac goes on to say that while he's with Even. But that doesn't mean I'm gay. Ace knows he's young and says it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you found someone you like. Isaac says there's nothing wrong with being gay. It's just that I'm not that gay. Like you. Ace got a little confused and asked what kind of gay I was. Isaac says it's just kind of feminine and he likes to discuss men and cottagings and such out loud. Isaac realized that what he said was probably inappropriate. So, he added, of course I respect you all very much. It's just that I'm not like that. Ace said he disagrees with Isaac about these gay labels. He's just being himself. Isaac dismissively says that he's not going to wear mascara and leggings just because he likes even. He won't be at the parade either. He doesn't want to be around those people. And C was a little hard of hearing. He said the ones you don't want to be around. Those are the ones who are fighting for their rights. I need to tell you one thing about them. Those people have endured discrimination from others for so many years. Some were even beaten and killed. But they're not deliberately striving to be different. Rather, it is because they would rather die than hide their true selves. Ace is a little emotional. Ace walked away a little angry. It made Isaac think about what he said. Receiving a bit too many messages, Isaac's little head is a bit confused. That's when he received a message back from Even. Even says it's moving too fast between the two of them. He knew it was his fault, but he needed more time. Isaac looks dumbfounded. What does this mean? You're the one who initiated it, and now you're the one who says it's too soon. Don't tease me like that. Isaac is confused. He felt like he was being played. What the hell love is? It boggles the mind. A couple of his buddies were chatting about girl talk and he was drinking alone. Emma's house is having another party and a couple of buddies forcefully drag Isaac, along with them, to the party. When they got to Emma's door, the boys guarding the door wouldn't let them in. Isaac sees even inside at the door. He forced his way in. Emma saw him. Isaac apologizes for leaving her alone on Halloween. He called himself an asshole. 
Emma says that she doesn't think Isaac is an asshole because of that incident. She thinks Isaac is an asshole because he made himself interested in him. And really, he's just gay. Emma says what decade is it? Isaac come out of the closet. Isaac didn't realize that Emma already knew about him and even. It looks like word has gotten around about this. Isaac was very confused in his head. He looked up and saw Even and Sophia kissing again. Didn't even say they were separated. Isaac was so angry he left. The unsuspecting buddy saw him leaving and made a joke to him. An angry Isaac rushes up and pushes him to the ground. A couple buddies were surprised too. This is not the old Isaac. And at that moment, even on the side was in great pain. He had no choice but to do so. Only, it all hurts Isaac, who doesn't know what's going on. Deeply, Isaac doesn't know what he did wrong. Why does he have to suffer like this? He wrapped himself up tightly as if the whole world was full of malice. He didn't want to deal with the world. He began to suffer from severe insomnia and couldn't sleep all night. His studies were also greatly affected. Even came back to him at lunch. He didn't want to talk to him again. He went to the school nurse to get a prescription for sleeping pills. The school nurse said, everyone is an island inside. If he didn't communicate with the outside world, he would be an island. The school nurse suggested that it would be best for him to go and talk to someone he trusted. Som kan hjälpa sortera lite tankarna som har på huvudet. Isaac decides to talk to his best buddy Dunn. Isaac says he's been acting out lately because of relationship problems. He asked Dunn to guess who it was because of. Dunn guesses a couple of girls' names, and Isaac says none of them are right. He then gives Dunn a hint that it's not girls. When he finished speaking, he nervously watched Dunn's reaction. Dunn asks, in lock shock, if it's himself. Dunn's interruption instantly put Isaac at ease. His biggest fear in hiding himself before was not knowing what his best friends would think. He wondered if he would be ostracized. Turns out it was all a case of thinking too seriously for myself. Even snuck another comic into his pocket at some point. He didn't know what even really wanted. He reached out to the experienced Ace for counseling. Ace saw that he was sincere and iced the situation. Ace said that in his experience, there are a lot of heterosexual guys who sleep with the same sex as well, but they don't usually break up with their girlfriends. Isaac doesn't know what even really thinks. But word seems to have gotten around the school that he and even are dating. A girl specifically messaged him to check. There were also girls he didn't know saying hello to him. The news likewise reached the ears of two other good buddies, but they both took it completely as a joke, because in their eyes, Isaac is into girls. Isaac, encouraged by Dan's eyes, reviews what happened to him and even. Both buddies, outside of being slightly surprised to hear it, accepted the whole thing naturally. Isaac receives another comment from even. In the evening, three straight men get together to help Isaac analyze the situation. Dunn thinks Even might be playing a trick on him. He told Isaac to send a message to test it. Isaac messaged Even. He said don't contact me again or send any more comics until you break up with your girlfriend. After the message went out, a toast was raised to celebrate his bravery. Soon after, Even messaged back asking what you were doing and if we could talk. Isaac asks what everyone should do back. Dunn told him to just go back to a few words and hang out at home. Don't write a single other word without a hint of emotion. Dunn said I bet he'd call right away. Time passed. The phone didn't ring. And the message wasn't returned. The atmosphere was somewhat frowning. Everyone started talking about something more other to ease the awkwardness. Isaac is also lost. Just then, the doorbell rang. Isaac thought his roommate had forgotten his keys. He looked in the foyer and it was even. Everyone is excited. Fido says, then we're just in time to meet this even. Isaac told them to get the hell out of there and get the hell out the back door. Fido was blown away without even putting on his shoes. One more such night and the two made up again. Isaac, who has successfully indulged in love, starts giggling as soon as he sees Even. Even huffed and drew him a heart on the glass. Isaac asks where he's going today, and Even says he's got a luxury suite. A happy man will want the world to know he is happy. Even introduced Even to the receptionist, whom he didn't know, that this was my boyfriend. The two enjoyed some lavish romance, but what Isaac didn't expect was for Even to stay up most of the night. In a daze, he watched as Even went out seemingly naked. He vaguely heard Even say that he was going to McDonald's to get a snack. Isaac was instantly sober. He confirms that Even left the hotel without any clothes. Isaac was dumbfounded. He went out and searched for half a day but couldn't find anyone. He had to call Even's ex-girlfriend Sophia. Isaac clutches Even's clothes as he anxiously searches the streets for Even. Sophia arrives and tells him that Even was found by the police and that he is now safe. Isaac asks Even what's going on. Sophia says Even is bipolar. He's sick. You think he really likes you? That's because he's sick. So please try to stay away from him in the future. Isaac stayed where he was because of his mom. He made a vow to stay away from the psychos. But I didn't realize that the Even he liked was this kind of person. For the next few days, he was weak and paralyzed in bed. Even sent him a lot of messages and he didn't reply. Tears would come to my eyes without my realizing it. 
When he gets to school, Dunn asks him what's wrong. It's sad, even was crazy to run out in the middle of the night with no clothes on. He's bipolar. Fido happens to hear bipolar disorder and says that his mom has it. Isaac is surprised because he's met Fido's mom. She looks like a normal person. Fido says his mom was normal, just bipolar. She would have periods of time where she was either depressed or happy. Fido laughs when he hears Isaac say that even ran out in the middle of the night completely naked. He said his mom had more funny things than that. But as soon as this period was over, it was fine. Isaac didn't realize that in Fido's eyes, these acts were so trivial. He says that even's ex-girlfriend's claim that even likes him is false, and it's just an act of his onset. Fido is dismissive and scolds Isaac, saying it's a shame you have any brains at all, and you can't believe what his ex-girlfriend says. Even is just bipolar, but his brain is normal. He has the ability to think independently. He tells Isaac to talk to even. On the evening of Christmas Eve, Isaac goes to a concert at church. He got another text from even. Even apologized again. Even says he's sitting right where they first met. He wants to see Isaac, and he's afraid he's going to lose Isaac. But he forgets that no one is lost, because everyone is alone. In another world, in a parallel universe, they will always be together. At the moment, beats and pieces with Eva flashed through Isaac's mind like movie images. He glanced at the message on his cell phone again. He got up and left the church and went to the place where they first met. Even is still here. Isaac brought Even home. Even, who is in a depressive face, has been sleeping. He slept for days and nights. Isaac lay quietly watching him. Even woke up and wanted to leave. He said he didn't want to see Isaac lying around sadly taking care of him. Isaac says he's not sad. Even says but he'll still hurt Isaac later. And then he'll hate himself. Isaac says that maybe tomorrow the earth will be destroyed. So they can't stop talking about the future. They could play a game called Isaac and even every second. In the game, they only have to worry about what happens in the next minute. Even asked what they were going to do in the next minute. Isaac says the next minute. They're going to kiss. The story ends here. Maybe it won't always be happy and sweet in love, but having it once is its greatest beauty.